Welcome to the Unicon um, Open Source Support Briefing for Open Aquella. Uh, we'll be covering the last, um, the last two quarters. So I'm your presenter today, Chris Beach. I am the Unicon Open Aquella Tech Lead. Uh, more generally, I'm a software developer at Unicon focused on uh, primarily open source software, uh, as well as a focus on content management strategy. For our agenda today, we'll be covering some community news. We'll talk a little bit about the latest releases. Uh, we will review Unicon's contributions back to the community through the Sustaining Engineering Program. Uh, we will talk about the upcoming releases and uh, what we can start expecting from, um, from Open Aquila. Um, then we will cover some events that will be coming up in the near future, and we, we'll open it up for any questions. So for community news, uh, we have our three primary groups, the community developer meeting, the advisory board, and the security group. Uh, the community developer meeting, uh, we continue to meet monthly. It's a strong group, lots of good discussion going on in there. Um, all of our minutes are open and on the Open Aquila Wiki, as well as um, if, you, if anyone wants to join, they're well they're welcome to they can put things on the agenda um, and it's really just kind of a, an open format for folks that are interested in the development of Aquella um, looking to get into the development of Aquella you know and helping out the community uh, to have a place um, to discuss uh, with like-minded folks uh, we are currently working on drafting a community developer guide so anyone can go ahead and fork the open Aquella repo uh, make changes and open a pull request, right? It's the beauty of open source software. Um, and, and Open Aquila is, is very open in that sense. Um, for people that have the rights to merge code into the code base, um, we want to make sure that they are, um, you know, they've kind of been vetted, right? So they're vetted by uh, the community, the, the folks that regularly attend the community developer meetings, and then they'll be approved uh, well, and that's the process we're working on, but it looks like they'll also then be kind of approved by the um, the advisory board, just to make sure um, that anyone could join, uh, but maybe not everyone should. So uh, we're we're working on those guidelines so folks are aware of um, of what it takes to to be able to merge code into the primary code base. So if you're interested in developing, we welcome you to join us. We are we meet every first Friday. Um, AU uh, Australia time. So sometimes that means it'll be Thursday of the previous month, just depending on where uh, where the month ends. Um, but we try to post it out on the um, on the open or on the Aquila Dev Group as well as um, on the wiki that's on the link up there. And so folks should be aware if they if they want to join, um, they should be able to find out when we're when we're meeting. For the advisory board, um, they they focus on. Um, in part, at least, guiding major decisions as um, as the they crop up in the community developer meetings and in the security group, um, and we had a uh, a little bit of a shuffle in who is on the advisory board. And Anne Marie Har from the California College of the Arts um, has joined the advisory board um, over these last two quarters. So we're excited to have her and her experience that she'll bring to it. Uh, the security group is available. Um, thankfully, there hasn't been need to have a whole lot of chatter among the security group. Uh, we'll be talking about the latest release had some security dependency updates, but there hasn't been any major security issues um, that would require invoking, uh, you know, a lot of discussion there. So, um, and then just in the last bit of community news, the uh, Perio Open Aquila Slack channel was removed. So we sent out a note to the, the mailing list and we checked with the, um, the various groups, the CDM and the advisory board, um, and, and folks felt that the community would be best served by having, um, essentially having a paper trail, right? So the free version of Slack, you don't have unlimited history, um, as well as people just didn't seem to use it a whole lot. And so we have the avenues of, you can open a GitHub issue ticket, you can post on the mailing list, you can talk to your commercial support um, services provider, as well as um, just, you know, joining the CDM. And since anyone can join, right, if you have a burning question, 
you can you can help get it answered there. All right. So talk, moving on to the latest releases, uh, 2019.2 was released in uh, right at the end of uh, last year, right in December, and it came with several features. Uh, you can now do duplicate attachment checking, which will work with files and with URLs. And you can do, you can have, when you delete a user from the system, it will no longer just show like a UUID or, you know, this is a, an unknown user, but you'll, the username will be able to be persisted. Uh, with GDPR guidelines, um, you know, that's still in play, um, but if you don't invoke those, then you'd be able to see these usernames. As uh, a bit of work was done with taxonomies, there's some new taxonomy REST APIs, and you can now sort uh, taxonomy terms either at a child level or through the entire taxonomy. The, uh, there was a legacy user interface bridge developed, so when you turn on the new UI, it is still in a kind of a beta phase, if you will, uh, and, and not every part of Open Aquella is um, has been converted yet right so things like the contribution wizard and the search pages um, are still on the old ui including the um, the selection session when you do integrations and so this legacy ui bridge worked to um, to to create css that will match the choices that you select in the new UI theme editor, um, and then we'll apply them across the board for all the legacy UI components. And this is only when you're um, when you've turned on the new UI, right? Um, and the goal was to create less of a jarring experience, right? So folks that are wanting to try out the new UI, which is great, that's where we're going. So we the community needs to have test people testing it, especially just in their test environments. Um, this legacy UI bridge allows for a more consistent experience. And the last kind of noteworthy thing that I wanted to talk about in 2019 was attachment health. Uh, we have a slide on a little later in sustaining engineering on what that really entails. Um, but essentially, there was there's been some concerns in the community that uh, you you upload a file to Aquella and then it's no longer there after a while. Um, and that's that's bad for a content management system. Um, Open Aquella is powerful enough that you can script, uh, you can set up scripting or your REST APIs that will make it look like attachments are missing. And we've seen in some cases where this this was the case, right? Um, but we've also seen in some cases that Open Aquella's code there was a bug in it, and it needs you know, and we're working to resolve it. So. Uh, this attachment health things are more for the monitoring of uh, of how files are handled in Open Aquella, so we can make the determination if it's a scripting error or if it's something that needs to be adjusted in Open Aquella. Uh, the attachment health um, uh, changes were also backported to 2019.1. For 2020.1, this was released in March. Um, and it was its primary focus was dependency updates, um, and these dependency updates were focused on on security reviews that were done. Uh, the the major areas that uh, dependencies were upgraded in so Postgres. So if you use that database uh, for your backend, Jackson for um, J JSON handling, XML handling, the Swagger UI. So if you use API Docs .do, um, Ghost script was not really a an update in Open Aquella, but it was just confirmed that uh, the latest version of Ghost script, at least on Linux, works with um, works with Open Aquella 2020.1. It should work with earlier versions as well, um, but it was able to you're able to update that external dependency uh, to remove um, that possibility of a of a security attack. Uh, Xtreme was updated. That's you know primarily to marshal Java objects, so going from the database and whatnot. Tiny MCE for your uh, your rich content editor experience, and then Tomcat, which is of course the embedded app server that runs Open Aquella. Other dependency updates uh, was. Uh, was included in the admin console launcher, so not specifically 2020.1, um, but it is, you know, it's 
it's still needed for you to use Open Equality. You have to use this um, this project as well. Um, and the Jackson libraries that we talked about um, earlier, and as well as the uh, embedded Java or the bundled uh, Java build, it was updated for the for the launcher. Uh, 2020.1 also saw some cloud provider fixes. Right now, the only cloud provider that I'm aware of is from Edelex Content Services, uh, their auto tag feature, which is a pretty nifty thing. Um, cloud providers allow you to essentially kind of create um, external site plugins, if you will, to open Aquila. And in this case, um, the that cloud provider uh, does auto tagging of um, things like images. So if you put in a, if you upload a, a mountain picture with a lake and cabins and stuff, um, Edelex content services will actually, um, actually send the picture to Google, which inspects it and comes back with a list of suggested tags. Um, you don't have to use Edelex content services to use cont uh, to use cloud providers. You can create your own cloud provider. Um, and, uh, but, the fixes that came in is when you're running behind a proxy, um, there were some issues with the cloud provider um, talking appropriately with Open Equal, and that's been fixed. Uh, there's been my various minor fixes to the legacy and the new user interfaces. Uh, this is, you know, this is the continued effort, and we'll see this in the as we talk about the upcoming releases. But just there's a lot of effort in the community focused on the new UI, right? It's you know, when you show someone Open Aquila for the first time on the old UI without any theming done, they, you know, it, they're taken aback, right? Because it doesn't look very modern. Um, and so the, we see this even in 2020.1 where, um, where the new UI is, is continuing to grow. Um, as part of those fixes, uh, just deeper alignment with WCAG 2.0 AA in the new UI. There's not a lot going on in the old UI right now if there was an issue, but uh, we want to keep up kind of that standard of accessibility. Uh, the API documentation um, is also now secured in 2020.1. Um, so this was from, uh, so when you go to the, your institution URL slash API docs dot do, um, generally it's completely open. And if you have the permissions to, you know, to say edit an item, then you could go ahead and make that call. Otherwise, you come back with a you know a permission um, denied error. But you could still access all the um, you could still access essentially the rest documentation. Now you need the view API docs, and that's just a way to secure your site. Um, it doesn't really need. Um, I mean, you can go ahead and download Open Aquila and find all the rest calls. But for an attacker that's just looking to be nefarious, um, this just helped to deter them a little bit more. And then a generic LTI endpoint um, was added. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in sustaining engineering with the um, with the Blackboard connector. But you now have a way to, um, you know, connect kind of any any presentation layer software that'll talk LTI 1.1. Um, there's a good chance you'll be able to link Open Aquila content that way now. Right, so moving on to sustaining engineering. Um, as a reminder, sustaining engineering is part of Unicon's open source support program where every subscriber that we get also, uh, we set aside a chunk of hours to give back to the community. And we do so in a manner uh, that, uh, well, we base what we do on community needs, um, specifically our subscriber needs. And so as we're looking ahead to the next releases, um, if there's something that's as, a, as an open source subscriber with Unicon that you're like, I would really like this either fixed in Open Aquila or this is just, this is killing me and we need to get this, you know, this one bug fixed or something, let us know. Open a Zendesk ticket and we will, um, we will do our best to, to get that in and prioritize that. So in the last two quarters, uh, we've been focused very heavily on this Blackboard integration. Um, it's something that we've recognized that the community and and some of our subscribers um, are are it's already affecting them, but it's going to affect them pretty severely here uh, soon. Um, so Blackboard is turning off their SOAP web services, which any action that you do from Aquella trying to talk to Blackboard will stop working. So uh, 
the, the find uses, add to external system, those kind of things. Once SOAP web services are turned off, it won't work anymore. Uh, we've also heard reports that these web services are already starting to not work. Um, so we are just, we're working as fast as we can, um, given the budget and time allowed uh, to, to move over to a new way to integrate with Blackboard. Uh, we've, we've turned on continuous integration via Travis and the integration repo uh, just to make builds more automated, more stable. Uh, we've turned, uh, when, as we were building out this new integration with Blackboard, uh, we chose to take the LTI uh, logic and make it generic. And so when you go into your LTI consumer and open a quello, there's now, um, parameters that you can set to say, hey, when my, when my username and my user ID comes over in the LTI launch, um, you know, these are the custom parameter names that I want to use, right? And so if you can do substitution variables in your, in your presentation layer application as your LTI launch occurs, now OpenAquela can pick those up. Um, and there's a couple, there's another, uh, there's another way as well to customize it where uh, when you when you create a user based on an LTI launch, you have the option to make that user's ID more unique and add a code um, that is unique to the uh, LTI consumer. Um, and you have the ability to turn that on and off. So with those options, you should be able to then, um, it doesn't have to be a Blackboard LTI launch, you can just do an, a generic LTI launch. Now granted, the Canvas and the uh, D2L um, LTI launches are still, they don't really make use of those substitution variables. There's no reason why you couldn't, um, but those were working and, you know, since it wasn't broken, we, you know, we didn't try to, to mess with that code. So now that the ge general LTI is in place, right, we, we enhance that, it is in production, um, it's ready to go. Uh, the next step for Blackboard adopters is to take all of their building block LTI links and move them over to standard Blackboard LTI links. Um, and so we built out a migration building block to do that. We're in a round of bug fixes on it. Um, it's proving to, to not be a simple task because it's just a bunch of legacy um, content um, configuration code that was in the building block that we have to, or in the building block and in the, in the Blackboard content links that we have to move over to standard links. But that, that feature is there it's, um, and it's, you know, it's being enhanced now to allow folks to move over. And we're also then working on the REST side of the integration. So you have both the pull to LMS and push to LMS functionalities as you enjoy in Canvas and D2L. Um, as a note, um, this will only really affect folks on Blackboard and possibly in, in Moodle. Um, version 3900 will be released um, to the Blackboard SaaS environments uh, summer of, tw of this year. Uh, web services will stop working at that point. Uh, and then the version 3900, we've also been made aware that due to GP GDPR restrictions, Blackboard did an audit and they are, um, and they flagged Open Aquila as non-compliant. Um, and we, after we talked with them, we realized they were using an older version of Aquila. Uh, we've given them the latest information that we had and they're, um, they're reviewing again. So hopefully that will be a non-issue, um, but you know, just, just recognize that that's something to be aware of if you use Blackboard. Um, as well as with this effort, um, Edelox made some changes to the Moodle module uh, to be more GDPR compliant recently. Okay, so talking about attachment health, so um, this affects, um, well, let me kind of restart there. So with attachment health, we talked about how you can, um, you have the ability to do file audits in your, in your logs now, right? Um, if you'll notice uh, in the configuration block here, um, you set certain um, certain loggers at the trace level, um, which that's gonna fill up your logs pretty quick. Um, but 
if you're noticing an issue with your attachments, and then you can go ahead and turn this on just for a time, you know, a shorter time, especially if it's in production. Uh, but you should be able to then walk through um, uh, Open Aquella receiving your file, moving it around, and then ultimately, you know, possibly deleting your file. Um, sometimes that's a completely appropriate action. Um, as and when it deletes it, it sends out a stack trace in the log, so you can say, well, why did it delete it? What was it trying to do? Um, we've also added in a configuration to toggle the remove staging areas task. You can access that through the optional config properties file. Uh, you should not turn this off unless you have a need to. Um, and if you have a need to, please let us know, uh, let the community know. So that's, um, you know, we're continuing to look at, you know, how do we make Open Aquila just that much more stable? Um, and this is one of the ways that, you know, we're, we're, we're really focused on buttoning up because it's, it's just not cool for a content management system to, um, to even have the possibility that it's losing its content, whether it's from scripting issues or from the code. So we're trying to, to resolve that as we can. Uh, going to the, uh, talking about the, the note that you see on there about the check files function. Um, there is a tool that, it was actually open sourced from um, the commercial days of Aquella. Uh, it was turned, uh, it was called a, a ping Aquella and it was folded into the open Aquella toolbox as check files. And it attempts to go through and look at all your files that are in your database and then say, does your file exist on, um, on in your file store? Um, it's not a, um, a it's not a comprehensive tool yet. There's still some file attachment types that it doesn't know how to review in the file store, um, but it gets you part of the way there. So you can have some comfort level to say, hey, my, um, you know, my files are where they're supposed to be. Some miscellaneous efforts that we did. Uh, we've been working on some documentation. Uh, so let me jump out of pres presentation mode and we'll just go here for a second. So. We've set up this known working supporting software um, documentation page. Uh, this is really supposed to be community driven. So if you are, if you use say image magic seven dot whatever, and you're like, hey, it works really well, um, open a pull request against the documentation to update this page. Um, the commercial services providers that work with Open Aquella have started updated. That's what you see here. And, and we just like to uh, kind of community source um, making this, uh, you know, keeping this up to date. The other documentation piece, it's an honorable mention since we actually put it in at the beginning of April, um, but I wanted folks to be aware of it. Um, we are working to gather all of the ser possible server configurations that you can do in Open Aquila. We are working to bring over into this one page, right? So it's by configuration file. It tells you what the default min version is, max version if it was deprecated. Um, so you can have kind of a one-stop shop of how do I configure Aquila on the server. Get back to present mode here. All right, we released 2019.1.3 uh, that had some um, hot fixes or some, some back ports from 2019.2. Uh, we worked on EBI licensing. So if you use the, the Aquila bulk importer tool, uh, it's, it's been made known in the community now that it's still, all the code still references Pearson as the copyright holder, which is no longer appropriate because um, Aperio holds the copyright to that code. Um, so we're looking to we're looking to change the the licensing um, verbiage as well as making sure that it is all the dependencies are used appropriately. So it's a work in progress. Um, but if you see that, and if you're a if you have a concern about it, let us know. Uh, but we are aware of the general concern and are working to fix it. Uh, Tomcats, uh, we added a internal proxies configuration. Um, what this allows is when you're using the new UI, beside some load balancers, uh, you can't upload files. And this was due to uh, Tomcat's internal proxy configuration and the default configuration wasn't sufficient. And so we added an internal proxies to allow um, the new UI to work behind it 
the, from the best of our knowledge, any load balancer. Um, and then the last thing to, to mention on this slide is uh, there was a security upgrade needed in Tomcat to fix what was known as the goat cat, ghost cat issue, where people were able to um, use the AJP connection in Tomcat uh, nefariously. Right? Um, the way that Open Aquella is configured with Tomcat it's not it's not really as big of an issue first of all you can turn off ajp and just run with an http um, forwarding port from your web server to open aquella and you completely get rid of the issue or if you are using ajp and you set up your firewalls appropriately um, you know really no one should be able to actually send an ajp request except for your web server to open aquella that being said, uh, definitely a perception issue of, you know, Open Aquila is running an embedded Tomcat that is affected with Ghostcat and whatnot. So we, we went ahead and upgraded it. Um, and so you'll see that in the later versions that that's, that's now resolved. So let's talk for a few minutes then about upcoming releases. What can we... Um, what can we look forward to in Open Aquila? Uh, we're going to be completing the Blackboard REST integration as part of sustaining engineering. Uh, it just has to get done. Um, and then after that, we're going to be working on our priority backlog. So um, if you're an open source support client um, and you have something that you'd really like to see in Open Aquila, uh, please let us know and we're going to, and we'll prioritize that. Um, and then as time allows, we're going to be helping the community with the new UI. Um, so the sustaining engineering hours are being used up quite a bit with this Blackboard REST integration, um, but we would like to be able to help out um, as possible uh, to get this new UI over the finish line. As far as the community is concerned, and right now the community is made up for developers, is made up of Unicon and Edelax. Um, Edelax is focused um, quite heavily on finishing the overhaul of the, the new UI. It's a massive effort. They're using Google Material Design and React on the front end. They're exposing um, all the functionality that the front end needs. Um, they're exposing it through REST APIs if they're not already built out. Um, and they're looking to have um, all the new UI finished by 2020.3. 2020.2, they're looking, the latest I heard was that they're looking to completely overhaul the search page. Um, so as the new UI is coming out, I would encourage community members uh, to go ahead and take a look at that. Test it out, load it up on your test environments, toggle on the new UI, and take it for a spin. Um, granted, there'll be some things that are not converted over yet, but if you see something that's odd or whatnot, uh, reach out to your commercial services provider or open up a GitHub issue ticket um, and, let, and let the community be aware. Right, so upcoming events that um, uh, there'll be people there that can can talk about Open Aquella. Uh, we have Open Aperio 2020 coming up. Um, University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Um, it'll be in the USA uh, in mid June. Okay, um, due to COVID-19 issues, they are going to have an online component, which um, will be. Um, the registration fee is less for that. Um, and they're still hoping to have a face-to-face um, -a -face portion of it, uh, which will dovetail, of course, with the online presentations, but will just give uh, the community more face, uh, you know, more discussion time and whatnot. Um, and that will be decided late May if the face-to-face -face portion will, will happen. Um, our next briefing um, for Q2 and Q3 of this year will be uh, in early October. Uh, again, it'll just be a web call. Educause will be held in Boston this year um, in late October. And then Edel Expo will be in Australia. Uh, they're still working out the details of how that's going to look, if it's a single event or satellite events, um, but that'll be in uh, later this year. And just as the note says, any of these events, just like pretty much anything else in the world right now, um, due to COVID-19 efforts, uh, these events may change. I doubt that the, um, that the dates will change, but stay tuned if you're really interested in attending one of those. Um, you know, just keep an ear out for, for changes that are going to occur. 
And with that, if you want to get in contact with the community, um, these links haven't changed all that much from the, the last few briefings. You'll notice that the Slack channel is now off. Um, we encourage folks to reach out, right? The, the product is only, you know, the community is only going to be as good as, as we each individually make it, which kind of may sound tongue in cheek, but it's true, right? Um, it's, it's working now, but we would like to see more community members get engaged. Uh, so please utilize the, the mailing lists. Um, if you see an issue with Open Aquello or you have time to help even fix an issue, documentation or code, um, take a look at the GitHub issue tracker. Um, and then if you've done something cool with Open Aquello, you created this really interesting report or you've done some, um, some scripting on a display, uh, you know, resource summary that you just, you'd like to share and put it in the public domain, consider putting it into the community artifacts um, Open Aquila instance. Edelax has uh, been kind enough to host that, but it is public domain, they don't own it, um, and it's just a way for uh, users to share, uh, share information. So with that, we'll go ahead and open it up if there's any questions. Awesome, thank you for this. Um... I, I hadn't known some of this documentation, like the server configuration thing. That mm -hmm. looks really awesome. So I'm definitely going to take a look at that. I did have one, um, a couple questions, I guess. Uh, for the view API docs permission, mm -hmm. where is that in Security Manager? Where do I turn that on? It should be at the institution level. Is that in like a different place or something because like so I open security manager and if I click on institution I don't get any ACLs at the top level root uh, yeah, you, should be able, thing. you should be able to add a permission at that level um, I can after this call um, make sure that I'm not lying to you though I might be misremembering um, but it's at a top level it's not supposed to be like by collection or anything so, but I'll, I'll follow up and make sure, um, maybe send you a screenshot of, of that I'm seeing it. Now you're, you're on, um, you're on still 2019.2? Uh, I thought we had gone to a, a later version. Let me just look real quick. Oh, we are on 2019.2, yeah. Okay, you should still be able to add permissions at the institution level, but view API docs came in 2020.1. Uh, so you won't see. Oh, that. okay. Yeah. So it doesn't exist for us yet. Okay. Right. Well, that explains why I can't. <laughs> so. um, and then about EBI. So the licensing concern is about, you know, eventually getting it underneath the right org and open sourced and everything. We can still use it. Right. Yes. That's, that's yeah. not going to disappear anytime. Okay. Right. Cool. Right. Yeah, so I thought the, so. I just wasn't sure. Yeah, and, and that's a good point. So Aperio owns that, and Pearson was willing to have the executables be open sourced. So those are those are staying there, um, and uh, you know from everything I've heard, that's not a concern. We, you know, talking a little bit about EPI EBI since we do have a few minutes. Um, the the Python code base is pretty old, right? It uses yeah. uh, Py two exe and wx Python, um, and I'm I'm working right now, kind of on a on a on a related effort for um, an engagement to uh, to uh, to look at a bug in EBI, um, and and I'm just trying to get the the code base set up, right? And it's it's having problems building, and it's it's calling out that you know 2.7 and for python is now end of life <laughs> and it's just like you know yeah. we need to um again that's that's part of what we can use for sustaining engineering um as the priority allows but it's it's something that needs to be um, brought up to a little bit more of a modern time yeah for sure i've wondered about that because i can tell it's it's uh, a little bit old but yeah. Still works. Still it works does, you know, and I thought, you know, it would be so cool to like turn that into an Electron app and and use only REST interfaces for it and whatnot. Um, mm. And but you know, it is working right now. So if we can get it working with like maybe the latest Python or whatnot, it's you know, I think there'll be more value adding doing that than trying to just completely overhaul the system at this point. Right. Yeah. Do you okay, folks excellent. have EBI? Oh, yeah, we do. Um, okay. Kind of, we had like a really major project that was using it that just wrapped up recently, but it's always something on the back of my mind because it's so much easier to ask 
people to like catalog in a spreadsheet and then bulk upload everything, you know, mm -hmm. then um, do like really large projects one by one in open Aquella. So um, yeah, that's definitely something that we use and, and want to continue using in the future. Okay. Um, after these changes are made and whatnot, uh, would you be willing to take um, a, a build for a run on your environment and just make sure that, you know, just kind of do a smoke test on it? Yeah, I would love to. That Perfect. sounds great. All right. Well, I'll reach out when that time comes, um, but we're, that's one of our active development efforts right now. Cool. Cool. Good to hear it. Well, thanks a lot for this. Hey, you're welcome. I appreciate the, the discussion.